Hello class, welcome to Algebra Online again. Uh, I want to say thanks for all of your hard work in class today. And now that you guys are pros with multiplying monomials, I want you to go ahead and knock out this review nice and easy, and you shouldn't have any problems with it. Uh, for number six, don't forget to remember that the area of a parallelogram is the height times the base, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, and you guys can get started on uh, numbers 1 through 6. Alright, so go ahead and pause the video, and when you get back, we'll talk about this pattern that we have going on here. Alright, so welcome back. We're going to take a look at a pattern we have um, with exponents so we can learn more about how we're going to divide monomials. Okay, so for our first one, we have 3 to the 4th which is going to end up giving us 3 to the 4th is 81. 3 to the 3rd is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which gives us 9. Our next row, we have 3 to the 1st, which is just going to be 3. We can already see that the pattern is the numbers are getting smaller, right? So what happens when we have 3 to the 0 power? We're going to re want to remember that anything to the zero power is one. Okay. Now we have a negative exponent. What happens when we have a negative exponent? Well, we take the reciprocal, which is going to be one over three, and we make the exponent positive. So now we have one over three to the first, which is going to give us one third. We're going to do the same thing with 3 to the negative second. We're going to take the reciprocal, 1 over 3, and make the exponent positive. 1 over 3 squared is 1 ninth. We're going to do the same thing for the last two. 1 over 3 to the third gives us 1 over 27. And our final example is going to end up giving us 1 over 3 to the 4th, which we said earlier was 81. So as you can see, our numbers are still getting smaller because we're getting a larger fraction, a larger number on the bottom, but our number on top is staying the same. All right, so that's going to be important for when we're learning how to divide monomials. Okay, so what I want to do is look at a couple of terms here. Um, and our first one is zero exponents. Any term, as we saw earlier, to the zero power is going to be one. Remember our example up here, three to the zero gives us one. A negative exponent, well we should, when we have a negative exponent, we should simplify by taking the reciprocal and making the exponent positive. Okay, remember when we were multiplying monomials and we added the exponents? Well, when we're dividing monomials, we are going to subtract the exponents this time. Okay, and when we're talking about the order of magnitude, the order of magnitude is going to be the number rounded to the nearest power of 10 and one of the examples we have here is if we have 2000 and we are going to rewrite this for the order of magnitude since we're starting since we want to have a base of 2 here so we're going to move the decimal place 1 2 3 places so we're going to want to multiply that by 1,000, so we can move the decimal place three places. Another way to write 1,000 is going to be 10 to the third. So if we multiply 2 times 10 to the third, that's going to give us 2,000. So essentially we're just saying the same thing. And we're going to say the order of magnitude is 10 to the third. All right? 
So let's flip our sheet over and take a look of powers. All right. So yesterday we were looking at multiplication, the product of powers. Now we're looking at a quotient. So we have a to the m being divided by a to the p. Instead of adding those together, we're simply just going to multiply these together, or subtract them together, sorry. All right. So let's take a look at our first example. We've got x to the seventh times y to the twelfth divided by x to the sixth times y to the third. So all we're going to do is subtract the exponents this time. So we got x to the seven minus six times y to the twelve minus three. Then we just do our simple subtraction and we get x to the first, which we can write it just as x, and 12 minus 3 is 9. So we've got x to the first times y to the ninth, and that there will be our final answer. One thing I want you to remember though is we're always subtracting the top minus the bottom, okay? In our next example, we'll have a little bit of different of an outcome. So we have p to the second times r to the third divided by p to the seventh times r to the tenth. So we're going to start with dividing our p's. We've got p to the second minus 7 because we subtract the first one and then to the second one. And then we have our base r to 3 minus 10. So we've got 2 minus 7 will give us p to the negative 5 times r to the negative 7. All right. So remember we were talking earlier about when we have a negative exponent. What we're going to do is take the reciprocal. So we're going to put 1 over p and make the exponent positive to the fifth times 1 over r and change our exponent to positive with a final answer of 1 over p to the fifth times r to the seventh. So now that you guys got a grip on that, I want you to go ahead and work out number three on your own and we can take a look at that in class on Monday. Okay, let's take a look at our next key concept, the power of a quotient. Okay, so in our example, this time they're saying we have the quotient of a divided by b, but all of it is to the m power. All right, so if you see what they did there, they took the m and put it on the a, and they put it on the b as well. So the final result is a to the m power over b to the m power. And we're going to do the exact same thing in our examples. So right here they took the 4 and they put it on the 3 and they put it on the 5 to get our result of 3 to the 4th over 5 to the 4th. So we're going to use the exact same concept for our first example here. And we're going to take the 3 we're going to put it on each number in the parentheses or each variable. So if we were to rewrite this, we're going to say 4 to the 3rd times c to the 3rd to the 3rd. So we're going to have c to the 3rd times 3 is going to give us c to the ninth. So we multiplied the 3 times the 3, and with the d, we're going to multiply the 2 times the 3 to get d to the 6th, all of that over... 5 to the third. And then when we simplify that, we have 4 to the third, which is going to give us 64. C to the ninth is as simple as we can make it. D to the sixth is as simple as we can make it. And then 5 to the third will give us 125. And that will be our final answer. So I want you guys to go ahead and take a look at 
number two and do that one on your own. And when you finish that up, we'll take a look at number three, because number three has a little curve to it. Number three, they are trying to trick us and use a negative exponent. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing we did in our first example. We're going to put negative 3 on each term in the parentheses. So we'll have 4 to the negative third, c to the negative ninth, because negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, and we'll have d to the negative 6, because 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. All of that will be over 5 to the negative third. So when we were talking earlier about negative exponents, what we did is we took the reciprocal. So that's what we're going to do here. Anything with a negative exponent is going to flip from either the top down to the bottom. So these with negative exponents will flip down to the bottom. Or anything with a negative exponent in the bottom will flip up to the top. So we'll be left with 5 to the third over 4 to the third times c to the ninth times d to the sixth. So all we did there is take the reciprocal and we just flipped it upside down and then we can continue with our math and simplify it to 125 over 64 times c to the ninth, d to the sixth. Alright, so don't forget when we when we take the reciprocal we have to change the exponent from negative to a positive. Alright, we've got a couple whenever we have a non-zero number raised to the zero power. As we said earlier, whenever we have a number raised to the zero power, it's going to be 1. So if we look at our first example, we have, I'm going to zoom in here a little, 12 times m to the 8th times n to the 7th divided by 8, m to the 5th, n to the 10th, all raised to the zero power. So what do we do with the zero? We put it on each term in the parentheses, right? which is going to give us 12 to the 0 is 1. m to the 8th times 0 is going to be m to the 0, right? n to the 7th to the 0 is going to be n to the 0. So what's happening here? All of these are going to end up being to the 0 power, which means all of them are going to be 1. So 1 times 1 times 1 over 1 times 1 times 1 gives us 1. Alright, for our next example we have m to the 0 power. We know that's going to be 1. And then we have n to the 3rd divided by n squared. Since we have a quotient, we're going to subtract the exponents and get 1 times n to the 3 minus 2 is 1. So our final answer is just going to be n. Okay, let's take a look at our last key concept, which is the negative exponent property, which we've already actually talked about, so we won't need to discuss it too much more. But whenever we have a negative exponent, we're going to take the reciprocal and change the exponent to a positive number. So it works both ways. If we have 2 to the negative 4, then we're going to put we're going to flip that and make it 1 over 2 to the positive 4th. But what if we have 1 over j to the negative 4th? Then we're going to take the reciprocal of that, which is just going to be j over 1 and make the exponent positive, which is just j to the 4th. So let's look at our first example. In our first example, we have three different terms. We've got x, y, and z. So we're not going to be adding or subtracting any of our exponents because we don't have an x on the top and an x on the bottom. But we do have some negative exponents. So what we're going to do is we're going to move anyone with a negative exponent to the top and anyone with a negative exponent from the top down to the bottom. 
So we can rewrite this as y to the ninth stays on top times z to the sixth over x to the fourth. And that's going to be our final answer there. In our second example, we're going to have to do some division because we have common terms in the numerator and the denominator. So let's take a look at this one. On top we've got 75 and on bottom we have 15. So we're going to do 75 divided by 15 is going to give us a positive 5 over 1. Then we have p to the third divided by p to the fifth which is going to be p to the third minus 5. Okay. And then we're going to have q to the negative fifth minus q to the negative fourth. So we have negative 5 plus 4 because a negative minus a negative is a plus. And then we have r to the negative eighth is going to stay on the bottom because we don't have any r's in the top. Okay, so what we'll, f what we'll end up getting here is our 5's going to stay on top. We have p to the negative second. We have q to the negative 1. And we have r to the negative 8th. So just like the last problem we did, we're going to put any negatives up top and take any negatives from the top and put them down low. So our final answer is going to be 5r to the 8th divided by p squared times q. And that's our final answer. Okay, you guys can go ahead and knock out number 3 and number 4. So pause the video and when you get back we'll take a look at... Alright, let's take a look at this first example. Darren has $123,456 in his savings account. Tabo has $156 in his savings account. Determine the order of magnitude of Darren's account and Tabo's account. How many orders of magnitude as great is Darren's account as Tabo's account? So what we're going to do here is we're going to rewrite Darren and Tabo's numbers with the first number in the tens place. So we're going to move the decimal place over until 1 is in our tens place, or our ones place. Okay, so if we have Darren, we can rewrite his as 1 is in our ones place, point 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then we're going to say, how, how many places did we move the decimal? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if we multiply that by 10 to the 5th power, that's going to be the same as 123,456. So this is written, uh, the order of magnitude is going to be, for Darren's account, is going to be 10 to the 5th. Let's take a look at tables. So we're going to have, in our ones place, our first number, 1.56. How many places did we move the decimal? 1, 2, times 10 to the second. So the magnitude of power for Tabo is 10 to the second. Now we're going to say, how many orders of magnitude as great is Darren's account than Tabo's account? So we're going to divide Darren's order of magnitude by tables to get our final answer of 5 minus 2 is 10 to the third. So Darren's is 10 to the third as great as tables account. And you can go ahead and give number 2 a shot on your own and we'll look over that one in class on Monday. Alright, have a good weekend.